Good afternoon, and you're listening to the Mount Me Radio Kids on 101.5 FM. Currently, the weather in the region is clear and sunny with a temperature of, tw- of 28.8 degrees Celsius. We can expect a maximum of 28 today, dropping to a minimum of 14 tonight. Stay tuned to Morton Bay's very own radio station over the next hour as we'll be bringing the latest community announcements, Mount Me State School news, some interesting facts, kids speak, and an interview with today's guest, Mrs. Elizabeth Carenti, a guidance officer working in schools in the Morton Bay region. But first to kick off our show, we have some Alison Durbin. The time is now 1 o'clock p.m. Welcome back to 101.5 FM. You are with Dale and your kids from Mount Me School. Today uh, we are very fortunate to be joined by Mrs. Elizabeth Coronti, a guidance officer working in schools in the Morton Bay region. In today's topic, we are hoping to shed some light on bullying in, sk- in schools. Welcome, Mrs. Coronti, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Dale. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me to join your radio broadcast. Bullying has always been a problem since time immemorial, not only in schools, but in society in general. I personally believe that bullying is becoming even more pervasive in our lives than ever before. And I think it's great that the kids at Mount Me are so savvy about such issues and are wanting to learn more ways to combat it. Is it ever okay to fight back? Well, firstly, it's not okay to fight back in a physical sense, if that's what you mean, because this only serves to condone and promote the use of violence, and it transfers the victim into the role of the bully. This actually does nothing to solve the problem. In fact, it usually escalates the situation. Then, to add insult to injury, the victims also has to be reprimanded for the part that they played in the fight, which only makes them more stressed and upset. However, it is okay to fight back in the sense of standing up for yourself. In fact, the best way to stop a bully is to be assertive and tell them to stop doing what they're doing. What skills can you... Can kids develop to cope and deal with being bullied? Well, I think the most important and effective thing that you can learn to do when you're being bullied is to stay calm. The bully, and usually a group of their friends, or cheerleaders as we sometimes call them, are looking to get some kind of reaction out of you that shows that you're frightened or intimidated by them. This makes them feel powerful. But remember, nobody can make you feel bad about yourself unless you give them permission to do so. So stay strong and calm. Everybody's got their own strengths and sometimes you can use them to diffuse the situation. I once saw a girl do this really well. She was quite pretty and some of the other girls were jealous of her. So when they came up and told her that she was up herself, she started to do the pony walk in front of them. You know, as though she was a model strutting down the catwalk. Then she pretended to trip over her own feet and fall down. She landed looking all dazed and confused in this very ungainly pose. Well, the group of bullies all fell about laughing. And then one of them went over to her and helped her up and told her to come and join them. It's pretty hard to be nasty to someone who can make you laugh. But look, if you don't feel confident enough to try something like this, just look as though you couldn't care less and walk away. That's what I do. If they follow you or persist with their attacks whenever they see you, you need to walk up to them Look them in the eye and tell them calmly that you don't like the way they're treating you and they need to stop it immediately. Then walk off and stand with a couple of your friends. Or if you can't see anyone you know, go and find a teacher. Never be afraid to report the bully to an adult. 
A lot of kids think that this is going to make the situation worse for them. But believe me, once a bully establishes their dominance over you, it's very difficult to break free without the help of an adult. Thanks, Mrs. Corrente. After the break, we will continue our interview about what to do about bullying with our special guest, but first to take us out. Would you like to introduce our next song for us? Oh, yes. This is We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together by Taylor Swift. You're listening to 101.5 FM and the Mount Me School Radio Kids. And as promised, here are some more questions with today's guest, Mrs. Corrente, Guidance Officer at Mount Me School. So firstly, what is bullying and why is it that people show bullying behaviours? Well, bullying is a pattern of repeated aggression toward a person by someone who holds more power than them. These attacks might be physical with the intent of causing bodily harm or they could be verbal but in either case it will cause the victim psychological distress and create fear in their life. Sometimes bullying is carried out directly in a face-to-face -face situation, but it can also be done covertly through gossip and social exclusion or through the use of technology. Now, the people who indulge in bullying behaviours usually have a need within them to gain power over other people. They tend to be unhappy people for one reason or another and they think that by making someone else feel miserable, it's going to make them feel better. In fact, we often find that the bully is actually being bullied by someone at home or in some other sector of their life. I usually end up feeling just as sorry for the bully as I do for the victim. What steps can parents take if they find out that their child is being bullied? If you find that your child is the victim of bullying, you should immediately shore up the lines of communication with them. Encourage them on a daily basis to confide in you about the day's events. It's important for your child to feel loved and accepted, so try not to be too judgmental. And you can help them to open up about distressing situations by relating your own personal experiences to them and help them to examine their problems and think about some possible solutions. Help them to find the right words to counter those of the bully and rehearse them together until they become second nature to your child. Then, encourage positive behaviours in your child through the use of praise and rewards and try to get them to focus on the positive aspects of their day. And you can help to build up their confidence as well by giving them a little bit more independence and some more responsibilities at home. Just a little bit at a time so that you don't overwhelm them or set them up for failure. And I'd also make an appointment to discuss the matter with the school principal and alert him to what's happening. I know for a fact that Mr Buchanan and the teachers at Mount Me will be powerful allies to you in any bullying situation. Is there a type of child who may be more susceptible to being bullied or do bullies pick people at random? Well, while I believe that most of us have been bullied by some individual at some time in our lives, I think that a bully will usually look for someone who has low self-esteem and who's quiet and introverted by nature, making them less likely to defend themselves. The typical victim will often have an anxious temperament and tend to be somewhat withdrawn socially. They often come from families where the parents tend to be a little bit overprotective, resulting in few opportunities through which they can develop independence or learn to stand up for themselves. Well, you also sometimes find that these children have parents who aren't comfortable asserting themselves, so they're unlikely to be able to help their children in these situations. And that child has had no role models to show them an appropriate method of responding to a bully. 
we also often find that there's been some kind of stress in the home situation, like a divorce or financial problems, or even just being picked on by older siblings. All of these things can cause a child to be more anxious and vulnerable than other kids. Often the kid who is victimised isn't good at communicating and doesn't tend to get a lot of recognition at school, causing them to become marginalised and gain a reputation as being someone who's to be excluded. If parents are worried that their child may be the victim of bullying, there are certain signs that you can look for. Your child may develop a fear of going to school and sometimes become genuinely ill at the thought of it. You might notice that some of their things go missing and they might have unexplained injuries. You may notice that they become withdrawn or depressed or they might become difficult and argumentative. What they're really telling you is that everyone's picking on them. They might even start having nightmares and disturbed sleep patterns. And just generally speaking, you'll notice that they've got low self-esteem. Do you feel that antisocial behaviours such as bullying have intensified in today's society due to social media, re due to the social media revolution of Facebook and Twitter? Oh yes, definitely. In my day, if you were bullied at school, you could go home and play with your brothers and sisters and the kids next door and forget about it for a while. But today the bullies follow you home on Facebook and Twitter and emails and chats. There's no escaping those negative feelings that the bullies evoke. And the kids are even less likely to complain to parents about cyberbullying because they're afraid that the response will be that their accounts are closed down. Online relationships are becoming as important as everyday relationships and many kids would rather put up with being bullied than lose access to them. However, there are things that kids can do to protect themselves. Firstly, don't ever respond to a bullying message, but don't delete it either. Save it for evidence. You never know how the situation's going to turn out. If you find that you've been tagged in a photo that you don't approve of, you can untag yourself by going to Option and Remove Tag. Alternately, you can flag it by clicking I want this photo taken down and then clicking Confirm. If someone's making comments that you don't approve of, you can unfriend them, block them, or report them to the CyberSmart Online Helpline service by calling Kids Helpline. You can also tell your parents or a teacher. And most importantly, only add friends that you know. Don't add friends of friends. If anyone online wants to meet you in person, ask an adult to come with you. What can schools do to empower kids and prevent bullying behaviours? Schools usually act immediately to identify the bully and the peer group that's backing them, and they discuss with them their responsibilities, as well as the problem and the consequences of their actions. The administration team works with these students to build their awareness of this issue and develop skills that are going to promote responsible behaviour. Formative practices are then set in place so that the bully can build empathy with their victim, apologise and then make amends in some way. The school also works with the victim to provide solutions to the problem and meet with their parents to provide support. Bullying is also discussed in the class with a focus on restorative practices to make sure that no one is left feeling hostile and alienated. We need to make sure that all parties have grown in some way from the experience. The situation is then monitored closely by both the teachers and the administration team to ensure that no further incidents of bullying occur. 
Thanks, Mrs. Crenty. You've given some great advice. We'll be back after these songs. Welcome back. And you're here with the Mount Me School Radio Kids. And today's interview guest, Mrs. Il- Elizabeth Crenty. Here we go for 10 false facts about our guest today. 1. Place of birth. Brisbane. Favourite place to holiday? Europe. Favourite colour? Aqua. Number of brothers and sisters? Five. Early riser or night owl? Early riser. Favourite TV show? The Game of Letters and Numbers on SBS. Favourite actor? Probably Kate Blanchett. Favourite kids? Radio hosts? I'd have to say Tony Johnson. He hosted the Our Kids charity fundraiser and he produced the Bully Free TV videos. If you can, if you could invite anyone to dinner, who would it be? Oh, I'd love to spend time with Quentin Bryce, our Governor General. Wouldn't she have some interesting stories? Have you ever spent an entire day in your pajamas? No way! I love to get dressed up. Thanks for being our guest today. Thank you for talking with me, Dale. I can't believe how professional the Mount Me Radio kids are with their interviews. You certainly have very bright futures ahead of you. That was Mrs. Elizabeth Caronti, guidance officer of Mount Me State School and all-round lovely lady. Coming up within the hour, we have community am- announcements, Mount Me news, and a real challenge for our teacher. You're listening to 101.5 FM. Bringing more to Morton Bay region. The time now is 1.33 p.m. You are listening to Grayson and the Mount Me Radio Kids on 101.5 FM. It is now time for Mount Me Moves on the Air and Community Announcements. Mount Me Cross Country Training. The Mount Me Kids have started training for their annual cross country race. Our two teams, Kungara and Demonga, have been training like crazy and are very excited. There are lots of hills at Mount Me, so the 2.5 kilometres that the seniors have to do is very exhausting. It is, it is great that everyone is giving it a go. Game on. For all those who love gaming, a free, free sessions are held at Deception Bay Library every Tuesday between 5 to 7 p.m. and Caboolture Library every Tuesday, and every Tuesday and Thursday between 4 and 5 p.m. Just for your information, you can also game on online and rate or eliminate games for the chance to win prizes and have your reviews featured on our Game On website. The Mount Me District Historical Society is up and running. Our vision is keeping Mount Me history alive. The Society will be locating items of possible interest and naming and maintaining historical sites. Our group is open to any person who is, interest, who is interested in our history. In, in the future, there is a proposal to build a community heritage centre heritage center near the hall in which artefacts and, rep, and photographs representative of each phase of the development of Mount Me and the activities of its residents can be housed, preserved and displayed for the benefit of the present and future, future generations of Mount Me residents and vis- visitors. Its proximity will add to its value as an educational resource for the Mount Me School. For the Mount Me School, there is a display put together for members of the Mount Me District Historical Society in the Woodford Museum. We are very appreciative of the Woodford Museum for allowing us to have a display area. Each week, the Mount Me Kids Radio is on air. We will have a short bit of history about Mount Me. Should any listeners have any information, photos or artefacts from Mount Me they would like to share, feel free to contact Rowena on 54982262. That's it for today's announcements. Keep listening to your favourite station, 101.5 FM. Time is now 1.39 and you are with Grayson on 101.5 FM. If your day isn't going too well, don't worry, we will cheer you up with some side-splitting jokes. Here are some wacky headlines. I drops off shelf. Squad squad helps dog bite victim. <laughs> Dealers will hear car talk at noon. Enraged cow injures farmer with axe. <laughs> Lawman from Mexico barbecue guests. <laughs> Two Soviet ships collide, one dies. <laughs> 
Two sisters reunite after 18 years at checkout counter. <laughs> Hopefully those were able to put a smile on your dial. Coming up, we still have our kids speak, some challenges for your brains, and more great music from the 60s to now. Stay tuned to your favourite radio station, 101.5 FM, and the kids from Mount Me. That was Say La V by Robbie Neville on 101.5 FM. You are listening to Dale and the Mount Me Radio Kids. We are taking you right through to 2pm. The time is now 1.48. As part of our Kids Speak section this week, we have been inter- interviewing students from prep to year 7. On, on the topic, is the government talking enough action to global warming? Taking enough action to global warming. Here are some responses. Jake in grade 7 said that they are, they are more focused on being a opposition or prime minister. Freya in grade 6 says no because they worry about other things. M in grade 5 says... No, everything is getting overboard. Colby in grade 4 said, No, they aren't concentrating on the topic. Jasmine in grade 3 says, Yes, because they are putting in taxes. Chantel in grade 2, No, because they are not putting in enough money towards it. Uh, Nikki, Nika in grade 1 says, they are trying to stop it. Aiden and Prep, no, because the ice is melting right now. Thanks for all those people who participated in and gave their options. You're with the Mount Me Radio Kids, and we'll be right back after these songs. One I want. You're back with Selena and the kids. The kids Mount. The kids and the k- Mount Me Kids, r- Mount Me Radio Kids. We are now going to give you a challenge f- for your brains. Here we go. I can be s- crystal clear and s- just be as thick as a wall. I can be as f- flexible as a rubber band. I can be as large as the world or be as tiny as a postcard and be as dangerous as it. What am I? We will be right back after these songs to give you the answer. Welcome back. The riddle for this week was, I can be crystal clear and yet be as thick as a wall. I can be as flexible as a rubber band. I can be as large as the world or be as tiny as a postcard and still be a dangerous hazard. What am I? And the answer is... Water! Thanks for tuning in to 101.5 FM for show from the Mount Me Radio Kids. Remember, if you have any comments or feedback, we would love to hear about it. You can contact the 101.5 FM station through the website www.1015fm.com.au or via email radio at at 1015.com.au. The Mount Me Radio Kids will will be back broadcasting next week for another exciting show. Until then, bye from Grayson. Bye from Selena. And bye from Dale. See you next time, folks.